I am Forrest Whitaker. Ladies and gentlemen, attacks on schools and members of educational communities, students, teachers, and other personnel harm thousands of people every year. When schools are occupied or even destroyed, students lose out on their access to education. And when children get abducted and are forced to become soldiers, most will later struggle to recover the gift of education that was stolen from them. In the course of my peacebuilding work with young people from conflict-affected areas of Uganda and others, I've met many former child soldiers. However different their personal stories may be, they all share one thing, an avid desire for education. They all want to go back to school. Some even want to become educators. They can teach us the value of education and the cost we all incur when schools are not safe. Attacks on education affect many more people than the direct victims. Attacks create a climate of insecurity, which eventually limits the right to education of the 1.6 billion children who live in conflict zones. The world will not be able to achieve the Sustainable Development Goals if we cannot protect children and education from attacks and ensure the right of learners and teachers to inhabit safe spaces. Many governments have recognized this and endorsed the Safe School Declaration, but more, if not all governments, must join them. In this respect, I want to commend the governments of Nigeria, together with the governments of Argentina, Norway, Spain, and the Global Coalition to Protect Education from Attack for hosting the fourth International Conference on the Safe Schools Declaration. Your conference is sending a clear message that we must also increase our efforts, raising them from commitment to practice. Everyone should be on board, including governments, NGOs, and UN agencies. We must find new ways and resources to protect schools and educational communities from attack. But we must also do more than protecting schools when conflict is raging. We must ensure that schools and educational communities can contribute to preventing conflict and violence from happening, starting with schools themselves. The programs on peace education that I develop at schools and zones affected by conflict and violence in Africa and the Americas help students and teachers to maintain a climate of prevention and reconciliation which radiates in surrounding communities. Safer schools contribute to protecting peace. Our efforts at safe schools for the learners and educators are efforts at peace for all. Thank you for your attention.